Now, let's get along to the spoilery stuff. And I think I'm giggly because of how much I just didn't like this movie. And I'm trying to cope with the fact that I'm like, man, I am disappointed. I am so disappointed. Every character that was in the movie except for The Rock was trash. The Justice Society was garbage. The the kiddos were trash. The the uh, oh my gosh. Uh, um okay. So, uh, the movie starts off real strong. It gives you some good background stuff, good little like oh we need lots of filler, you know. So it gives us some misdirects. Also, I want to say this movie misdirects on purpose to an extent that I find interesting that there's there's a, I mean they use it in the end against us as and I thought that was it seems like a cop-out like like your their twist their twist doesn't seem earned a lot of their stuff the movie itself seems like it's wagging its tail around like it's part of a universe or part of an established something or other which I mean it technically I, I, I guess it is but it is that it seems like it does. It's acting like it deserves some kind of sentimentality that it never got because we never had experience with um, with Justice Society people before, or with you know the Suicide Squad. Like that's the one thing I'll say. They they had ties to Suicide Squad. Maybe that's what should have been the key. Um, but it just seemed like it didn't earn anything. So we get we get that great uh, intro. And then it moves forward through time, modern day. We have these cool bikes that are immediately part of the background because they have to be part of the plot overall. Some kind of device to make things harder for our hero. I gotta see those. Um, visual spectacles. Even whenever it wasn't necessary, they probably could have introed those bikes in another spot. Um, then they push forward through uh, the intro to the kid who is this little liberal, like, free my country kind of thing. I got a little respect for him at first, because I'm like, ah, they write, they write in some bad dialogue for him so that he can be, like, you know, proud, if you would, a nationalist of his own country. Um, and it seems a little heavy-handed, but no big deal. He can move on with that. Then they intro the mother and the uncle and all these other things. You know, these are all misdirects because we don't know these characters yet. And they do a good job about setting that up. They push forward. They tell us about, uh, like, where they're going and what they're doing to an extent. I do think I might have missed something there because all of a sudden we push forward through them trying to get through the gates of uh, one area of the country to another. Special country, by the way. Sorry. Uh, and, and it was that... 11. And of course... And it was that um, uh, they're going to some kind of temple where all the Shazam stuff existed. And um, it's like, you know, 2600 BC referential. So they push forward, you know, you get the, uh, the Shazam moment. They get overwhelmed by um, uh, soldiers. You get some inkling of who the bad guy is right there because one of the good guys that you think is bad guys and stuff like that. And then they, they move into um, The Rock's intro, which, visually speaking, they set that up all kinds of different ways that were fascinating. Because I had mentioned in the spoiler free, uh, uh, is that they got every guard on the planet that apparently was like over six foot tall and had jacked biceps, right? To run around and look all tough. And then they, they still throw down with The Rock the gigantic gargantuan human that he is with you know like demon blood or whatever's running I don't know man his his muscles are just out of this world which is why he's such a great superhero physique oh. anyways they do that on purpose to make him look like a monster because even in comparison to monsters he's a monster he's a monster Oof. and he just kills fools left and right this is the same problem I kind of had with uh, Scarlet Witch right just killing fools left and right. I thought this was PG-13. Like, I, I'm starting to lose faith in the rating system. Truly. Like, I lost faith already, I suppose. But, like, man, couldn't they do some differentiating? Like, I don't know that I'd want my 13-year-old necessarily watching Shazam go around killing fools left and right and being cool about it. Be like, yeah, hey, kill those fools. They're bad guys-ish. 
even the movie itself goes over these kind of weird lines of what's good, what's bad, right? This would be a lot easier if I could write it down and create some structure. Um, so we move through the movie, and then I believe, honestly, that's about where the, the good part ends. It's like the intro of Shazam into modern day is about where the, the movie that was worth watching ended. Because from there on is like schlocky garbage. Then you get the Justice Society intro, which was so exciting because it's Hawkman! I was excited for Hawkman, and Dr. Fate was sick. They got Pierce Brosnan, and then they start using some of these kind of like schlocky, unearned, like Dr. Fate is his name. Obviously, you can see the future, but like, nah. Then they intro these terrible side characters, Cyclone and Atom Smasher, and they were the worst versions of a high school stereotype in movie that I could possibly come up with. I hated that so much. I'm like, they, they took reasonable characters and they turned these four Justice Society people into jokes. All four of them were... Dr. Fate had the most redeeming qualities. Three out of the four of them were jokes. Cyclone was cool looking and the tech girl and pretty which gave Adam Smasher a reason to crush on her because they were of about the same age. And that same age is a direct, like, oh, I'm about that age, and I watch comic book movies so I can see myself. Uh, look, he's awkward and stupid and says dumb things. Huh? <laughs> Isn't that relatable? No. No, it's not fucking relatable. Okay? Sorry for the bad words. But seriously, Adam Smasher got turned into a dopey joke the whole time, which is fine. But, man, what a waste. What a waste. Just turn him into a punchline every other moment. His interactions with Hawkman were laughable constantly. They were having these, like, accidents happen. And Hawkman would be like, We're going to talk about this later. Like, Jesus. What? Like, they turned this movie into a family trip. A family road trip movie. Somewhere along the lines. I remember thinking that too. Somewhere, Black Adam got turned into a family road trip. What the actual... What? As we move through the movie from that intro that was worth watching, we get into uh, convoluted nonsense where I thought the female that was a, a mother was doing a good job and might have been picked for more than just being pretty and having an accent that kind of works. And as the movie continued on, I that completely fell apart because I, at one point, she was supposed to be begging for the life of her son at the behest of Black Adam to go and save him. And at his freakishly lightning speed, which they completely under, like, they showed him introing with a slow-mo video and I think Zeppelin playing like like Quicksilver and X-Men. And then throughout the movie, when it was time to be fast at the right time, he was never fast. What like when real things happened that would require speed, suddenly he wasn't fast anymore. It was very weird. Anyway, it's uh, it's the logic goes out the door. It's like that was what I was saying. Like it has these unearned illogical leaps of like, okay. You, you introed him as strong, bulletproof, lightning, fast, super freaking fast, right? How come in times of need where speed would have been of the essence, he was just watching everything go on? Oh, and then their use of slow-mo was trash. Every time they used slow-mo, except for the very first time. The very first time, it was cool and entertaining. And then they did it like seven more times. And each time, it's like diminishing returns. It's like, dude, do you know how to shoot slow-mo? I thought you did when we started this adventure. But as we've grown through the movie, maybe that first one was actually the last one you worked on. And these other ones were a bunch of nonsense that you put together throughout the way. Realizing like, eh, I'm not that good at this, am I? because the slow-mo was just making the movie longer. There were moments of that they could have gone and then done with it. But those moments would then be followed up by these um, Austin Powers like, no! Ah! And it's a steamroller that's driving the you know, like the, the speed of an ant. 
and that's the way most of the movie felt. I think that's actually my poster child. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to smash those two images together somehow. The slow death of the steamroller from Austin Powers and this movie. Because that makes sense to me. Sorry, I'm also map questing my way home. This is gonna be great. I'm posting it. I don't give a crap. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, so they kept on using uh, nostalgia for a team that didn't deserve it because three quarters of the characters were trash um, throughout the whole movie. They put Hawkman in devastating positions consistently through the movie that made you honestly believe that he had no right being a superhero. He got his face smashed in more times than I could begin to count. How in the world could a superhero continue to do a good job if in what we've been presented with, he just gets his ass kicked? Here's Black Adam. Looks like you're losing that fight because The Rock is here. Sex to be in his movie. You gotta be willing to put him over the top just like in wrestling. And that's what they really do. And that this whole movie is just like The Rock's actual wrestling career. And it is that he got put over early on and now he's trying to put over his character early on. And you know what actually is gonna do it? Fighting freaking Superman, which is the whole point of this even movie even happening. Oh. Anyways, um, let's see here. Go through the movie. You got the family trip going. I'm sure they, I mentioned the begging for the son's life at one point. You know, we got a really sad plot twist. Uh, you know, where the kid gets kidnapped because the crown, the background crown, that's somehow important. <sighs> Talk about a mul. Uh, is it a mulligan? No. It. Uh, oh, what are they called? A MacGuffin. The MacGuffin is this crown, right, that can make one descendant of the original character super powered with all the things of Satan and the, the damned. And that is the only way that they found a villain that was so powerful that A, it could obviously destroy that trashy justice society that can't fight no one because they have a bumbling teenage idiot, a cool looking girl that can push wind around, Dr. Fate that knows it's at the end of his rope, and a freaking muscle man that's just there to get his ass kicked. So that's what happened, right? That's exactly how it happens because that's the characters they are supposed to be. And then this demon comes back, so then of course they have to bring back Black Adam, even though they create a whole setup that they lock him away. It's like, I wish I could have had my watch on me for that. Like, so they lock him away at about, if I took, if I were to take the length of this movie and multiply it by 0.618, I have some guesses as to what sequence in the movie that might lead up to. This is one of those ideas, is that 0.618, that third act turn or whatever is right whenever The Rock is being put in like he's going to be called Black Adam to me. He's being put him on, you know, he volunteers. He volunteers. Oh, gosh. Again, I'm all over the place. They push forward through their family trip. The crown gets into the hands of the demon. The Justice Society gets thrashed. They had just put away Black Adam because he volunteered to be put away. What the... He somehow had a conscience for a moment and decided he'd rather spend eternity in a coma than perhaps even die and be with his children, which he almost was at the end of the movie because he doesn't know how to say fucking Shazam! I hated that so much. Oh my gosh. The man... To make sure that he couldn't say the word Shazam, which they even said as part of the dialogue, good, you know, we gotta make sure, like, hey, don't say Shazam. You know, don't let me say Shazam. I wouldn't want that power back or anything. Just stick a bunch of water in my mouth and put me in a coma. I'll be fine. I'm totally okay with that. Let's do it. So once that moment was over, because it was literally like 30 seconds of nonsense, they put him in the water to create some kind of suspension as if it was important. They created unnecessary drama in the movie. So weird. Anyways, uh fake tension. That's what that is. It's 
fake tension. Um, so he, he, of course, is, you know, let out by Dr. Fate. Dr. Fate has his whole through line. Hawkman's going to die at some point. Whatever. Who cares? He gets his ass beat all the time. He probably should die. He's not very good at being a superhero. The bad guys beat the crap out of him over and over and over again. And Black Adam is technically a bad guy, as established by the rules of the movie. But by the end of the movie, we, of course, have to change the narrative because The Rock is The Rock, and these movies have to continue, and he has to be seen as a good guy. So even Hawkman has to have a change of heart. That's insanity. We have a, a black and white kind of guy coming in and then you know giving him... If he's an established superhero that is supposed to have all these battles royale and whatnot, then he's not going to change his mind for this dickhead. You know what I mean? Hawkman would be fighting uh, Black Adam to the death as long as it takes. And he'll, I mean, according to this movie, just die. But still, that's not, like, they, they just, the rules are suspect. Okay, so, uh, movie through the movie, we were at... Uh, got to bring Shazam back or Black Adam back. So we're bringing Black Black Adam back from an underground thing that he voluntarily went to, which was only set up perhaps so that they could bring a character from Peacemaker in who had a clipboard on. She was the lead uh, blonde that was like second in charge of the field crew or main in charge of the field crew, right? And they had to bring her in for a split second. It's almost like having uh, Sharon Carter in the MCU pop in it's along those lines. And then, um, when Dr. Fate helps get him released, you wind up having him in an underwater chamber where he has a mask on his face and he dives into the water and he almost drowns. In the meantime, the mask falls off his face and, and all throughout this process, it's just like, why didn't you say Shazam before you got into the water, dipshit? Like, do we have to keep creating this fake tension? You intentionally made the man almost drown himself just to make the audience feel like he ain't gonna die. Like, do you honestly think that the audience believes for one second that he's gonna die or anything bad's gonna happen to him? Why did you drum up all that tension for him to float around in the water? You had to just create these weird scenarios where he wasn't around for a short period of time. That was essentially it. Like. We have to explain why this movie is going to take two hours, and in doing so, we have to lock away our, our our main weapon for a short period of time to continue to perpetuate this really loose and bad plot that is mostly a family trip movie. <laughs> Woo! I'm talking too hard. This was so disappointing. I'm... You know, I, I had such low hopes, too. I thought, I'm like, okay, 44% to 89%. The audience likes it. It's got to still be decent. No. Whoever wrote the script and the characters is trash. Because they don't know how to write characters at all. Like, they literally don't know how to write bumbling, awkward teenagers or maybe it was the director and actor's fault. I don't know. There's your three-man process. How... Yeah. Awkward teenagers in this, like, semi-serious movie that turns into a comedy about a family on a road trip. Ugh. With an Austin Powers slow-mo every five seconds. No! I should just clip that part of my whole thing out. That's my... Ugh. So, they get through the movie... And, uh, you know, The Rock has to come back. He says the words to Sam, of course. <sighs> Rips the bad guy in half. Because, literally, only Superman is going to put up a good fight. And this movie only exists so that the Superman-Black Adam fight will happen. And you got to keep that in mind in the sense of, like, Black Adam is freaking... Shazam's number one and always has been Black Adam has magic magic and Krypton and all this stuff there's going to be a real fight there the only reason it exists is because of The Rock and because of whatever power he has he, he went above 
um, the Warner Brother executives head to the new Warner Brother head, which is da da the axe of Zaslav, David Zaslav, who's over there. And of course, David Zaslav loves The Rock, or what? Like, who couldn't? I'm sure that'd be tough. He's a very charismatic person, I'm sure. And um, he went, you know, he goes above the head. He's like, listen, you know, Henry Cavill here is a fan favorite. Don't you hear the audience? I worked in an industry where it was all about the people. I'm the people's champ. I'm still the people's champ. And the people want Henry Cavill. And he's my agent's client. So make it happen. And I guarantee you, like, if he said anything beyond that, I'd be shocked. Because now here we are. Henry Cavill is officially finally back. It took the rock to do it. And we're going to have a... Uh, we're gonna have a probably Superman solo movie. I hope in between this and that, but maybe not. I don't know. There's gonna be, you know, this whole movie was set up just to make a Henry Cavill and Dwayne the Rock Johnson movie. Um, I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna be home soon. I think I'm doing like three miles under the speed limit. 60 to 65 through here just sh shifts around too much. Um, 21 minutes is a long enough time to talk erratically about a movie that was kind of disappointing, especially since I'm not, you know. Anyways, uh, tell me about what you think in the comments below. Click subscribe and like if you'd like to hear more. Uh, these are the things that people that post on YouTube all the time say. I figured I'd add it. Thanks. Bye. Whatever.